everybody. Perfect. Thank you. Welcome to the Transatlantic Rebels podcast, where we talk about movies, TV shows, music, books, and occasional bonus features on cryptocurrency, world affairs, and more. In-depth reviews for deeper minds from both sides of the Atlantic. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this episode of the Transatlantic Rebels podcast. My name is Jessel, and my co-host, who has just been ranting about the Mario film, by the way, is Rochard. Well, okay, let's let's explain. He hasn't been ranting about the Mario film itself, more the reaction to the Mario film itself, which is kind of like air, because I, I was going to go watch it yesterday in the evening, and then in the afternoon... I sort of just typed out, I was going to do like Rotten Tomatoes reviews. Or so I wrote in air movie review. And it's really funny because on Google, it came up with loads of quite fairly negative reviews. And I was like, what? Hang on. Is this film not, not that great? Because like it looked pretty good and I've heard some good things about it. Right. Yeah. And it was really like just a whole entire page of not great reviews. And then I clicked on Rotten Tomatoes and it had like 98% freshness rating. And I was like, Hang on, it's going over here. Like, it's going over here. I was like, "What's going on here?" Uh, so, and I was like, "You know what? Just don't think about it. I'm gonna go watch it." Yeah, because I, I actually saw a TikTok. Let, okay, this this is a really good thing. I saw a TikTok, and this guy explained about the person who wrote the air movie script. And for anyone who doesn't know, I'll just give you a very quick breakdown. Right, I'm sorry, I've forgotten his name, but I'll get I will get to it. This guy was homeless, right? And then he watched. The Last Dance on Netflix, the Michael Jordan documentary, the Chicago Bulls documentary, which is one of my favourite things of the last five years, easily. Right? He watched it and then he wrote really quickly a spec sheet. So a spec sheet is, sorry, a spec script yes. is when you're not involved in Hollywood in any way, shape or form. You're not an official screenwriter. You're not in the Screenwriters Guild or anything like that, right? It's basically just a hopeful punt. So he just wrote it all in one go, right? And then he sent it and then Ben Affleck and them, picked it up right and said yeah we're gonna do this now this guy was obviously like i'm a no nobody at all right i'm like a seventh level division kind of player in this whole thing right so he wasn't expecting it to get properly commissioned or he's probably thinking he's going to get ripped off effectively and then on the very last day of filming affleck calls him up and says look I'm going to give you the sole credit as the sole writer for this film, even though loads of other people contributed to it. Improvise. And had ad-lib lines and improvised character development, all that kind of stuff. But Affleck and Matt Damon were like, look, we had our chance with Goodwill Hunting. People took a punt on us and helped us. We're going to do the same, which is one of the best things I think I've ever heard. That was one of the most heartwarming things. Isn't that incredible? Here's my thing. I think... People could shit on Ben Affleck, but I got a feeling he's a generally a good dude. I personally just feel that way about him. I know he has people with the better for and stuff like that. But the thing that they're doing with this thing, like, you know about the artist equity thing they're doing with this thing? No. Where, where um, the people who get paid behind the scenes get paid more if the film does well, instead of the fact that if the film does well, then the people on top get paid more in a sense. Right there. So there's a lot more money coming to the people who work behind the scenes with these movies. As long as, they're, as, long as these movies do well in a sense. So... They're, they're incentivizing, they're incentivizing people to do the work they always do, work hard and stuff like that, but to make sure to get paid more. And that kind of deal. Like they get paid the regular thing, but they get paid more, the more better that the movie does in a sense. That is really cool. And, and actually I saw another TikTok and Ben Affleck was doing an interview completely in Spanish about air, like <laughs> from start to finish. And his Spanish is really good. Like you can make the JLo jokes all you want, but his Spanish was really good. Like, He's a good, yeah, yeah. I, I, like I said, I got a feeling like, like I know he has his personal demons and stuff like that. But I think when it comes to that kind of stuff, I think he actually gives a shit about things like that. I think he really does. I mean, if you think about his movies before you talk about Air, like you think about the movies that he done before that, like Gone Baby Gone, The Town, Argo. Like he actually, he, he's a person who actually gives a shit in a sense. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think so. so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's go into spoiler territory. What did you think about Air? I really enjoyed the movie. I thought it was interesting because I took it because I don't know if this is your reading of the movie. What I took away from it is people think that the movie is just about the shoe of Michael Jordan. And I feel like this movie personally on a sneak tip is about how creatives navigate the corporate culture in a sense. 
it, it, like there's two scenes in this movie that I feel like explains that the whole dialogue with Jason Bateman explaining to Matt Damon, like, okay, like Matt Damon wants to be like the, the purity guy. He wants to be the artist. He wants to make sure that it's not just about the corporation. And then Jason Bateman was like, yeah, you can do that. But just remember, like, there's people who work real jobs here and we rely on this stuff right there. So we respect you take the risk, but just don't forget that there's people here who work here that aren't in the corp or the top right there, that these will affect them. And then the other scene that got me was uh, when Viola Davis and Matt Damon on the phone and Matt Damon says to Viola Davis, like, well, those people don't let guys like us get ahead. And Viola Davis like, well, you have to learn how to make them see your worth and don't bend on that kind of deal situation right there. So it's kind of like, I feel like for me personally, the, the subtext in the movie was that kind of navigation of the corporate culture. But I think there were so many people I saw that said like, yes, it's glorifying Nike. I'm like, the whole time in the whole entire movie, Matt Damon is criticizing how these corporations play this shit safe. And he's trying to pull Ben Affleck out like where you you took risk before and you're not and you need to take risk again kind of deal like that in a sense right there. It's like, But there's a reality to this corporate thing that you have to kind of go through in a sense. Yeah, I'm surprised this film made it through without getting sued to high heaven. <laughs> And I say that as a compliment because yeah, yeah, you're right. They do criticize Nike. And actually, have you read the the, the book Shoe Dog by Phil Knight? That's his biography, his autobiography. No, it's a really good book. It's exceptional. It's one of the best like business leadership books, stroke biography things. And it, it his whole journey from start to finish is actually really fascinating. And he does touch a lot on this in the book, but definitely not to this level of degree. You know, you know accuracy and intimacy but in this film they make phil knight look like a complete <laughs> idiot like he's a clown and a buffoon and i was like i was like if i were phil knight watching this yeah i would be really annoyed i'd be like he probably thought he probably thought oh, i'm being hurt and ben affleck this is cool he probably thought like wow they're gonna like deify me like steve jobs in like the 50 films they made about steve jobs after steve jobs died right <laughs> And in this, you've got Ben Affleck <laughs> but just making error after time. error. After, like, like the scene in when they're, they're trying to, you know, they're, they're trying to get Michael Jordan in and, and um, Affleck comes in seven minutes late and he's just cut off everyone. And he, uh, absolute worst moment. And he's like, roll the film, roll the film, roll the film. And he's like, <laughs> the worst marketing video ever. Yeah. <laughs> and Affleck doesn't get it. Yeah. Sorry, Phil yeah. Knight doesn't get it. Yeah. yeah. I was like, how did Phil Knight sign off on this film without suing them to hell? Like, How did genuinely, Nike sign off with it? How did Nike sign off with it? Yeah. Like, I mean, genuinely, I am actually pretty sure. Because the rest of it, you're like, okay, fine. I can understand certain things. And by the end, Phil Knight comes out looking like a bit of a hero or whatever. You know? Yeah. But like, this was not in his book. <laughs> no, like, no, no, no. Not in his book at all. Like, and, and, so, and, and actually, he's pretty much the only character who gets like, painted as a bit of a buffoon in the whole film. <laughs> And it's Phil Knight, like the guy who started Nike. And I'm like, yes. wow, this is really weird. But anyway. And Matt Damon said the whole movie's ripping it. I'm like, bro, what are you doing? Come on. Yeah. This Buddhist saying that you drive in a, what do you say? He's like, like, he's like, like the Buddha drive a, 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 a purple, a, a purple like, Lambo Yeah, or something. great Porsche. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But okay, the standouts for me were, you know, Matt Damon in this was very good. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this is, I think this is his wheelhouse. I don't think he had to sort of, you know, from a performance perspective, he, he, does, he could do this in his sleep. He could do this stuff in his sleep. He could do this in his sleep. But the way that they framed his face, I think there's face, three stand I think there's three standouts. But we go. What you say? Okay, okay. Well, okay. So Matt Damon's one of them. Yeah. Viola Davis just goes oh, out saying that just that goes one out phone. Saying. The phone conversation is like two phone conversations that steal this whole movie in a way. It's her. And can you think the other one? Chris Messina. He cracked me the fuck up. It's got to be him, phone. right? The agent. Yeah, yes, fault. yes. He cracks me up on that phone call. Like he... <laughs> <laughs> when he's your... going off yeah. at him, the, <laughs> sure, the cinema was in stitches, yeah. actually. And low-key, and, and low-key, Jason Bateman had his moment with that one speech with the with the, with the thing with his kid in the shoes right there, too. But that was more understated. That was more understated, though. No, I mean, that was brilliant. And actually, if you look at the cinematography of it, the way that they frame certain things, they, they frame... Um, Matt Damon and Viola Davis when they're talking really huge on the screen like their faces take over the whole screen yeah not their bodies their faces and the same thing happens when he's making his personal pitch like his random speech that comes out of thin air to it's Michael in face, Jordan it's in his face yeah it's right in his face yeah so things like that are really good I think the, the film in general 
there was very little that was truly revolutionary about the film and anything yeah. like that. It's 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 not like by the numbers or anything like that or, no. or like paint by numbers, but I think it just hit all the marks that it needed to and it just did a very professional job throughout. Let me ask you a question about um Ben Affleck as a director. Is he is he just like he knows how to make solid movies? Is that who he is? Is that the guy? I mean, what what other films has he directed apart from Argo? Gone Baby Gone, Argo, and The Town. I didn't love any of those films. Like they were really? all, they were all fine. They were all good, but I never returned to any of them. But I'm saying that's what I'm saying. Is he just a solid director? Is yeah, he just a solid, yeah. And like with this, like if it was on, like on TV, I'd probably sit and watch this. The town, I, I wouldn't come back to. Gone Baby Gone was was fine, but I wouldn't come back to that. And uh, what was the other one you said? Argo, Argo. Yeah, Argo was definitely one where I watched it once and I was like, I enjoyed this. I'm never going to watch this again. <laughs> Ever. So he's a one he's a one and done guy. He's a one and done guy. Yeah. Not with J-Lo obviously, but like <laughs> this guy. There you go. <laughs> throw 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 a low hanging fruit right there, Jesus. Might as well. But you know, this was uh, I've seen this described as the perfect film for dads of a certain age, and I get that. Like for versus Ferrari exactly exactly it's, it's, it's the movies they don't make anymore <laughs> this is the, people complain about loads of stuff right now they're like you know tom cruise is the last movie star you know oh like, my, like oh no no my God. someone said this to me today tom cruise is the last movie star you know everything just has so much cgi in it nowadays and it's like did it did, did you know that the movie had the movie had hella cgi my guy it's just like that movie had they're you know. so uneducated. They're, 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 they buy it. Oh, I'm um, don't get me started. I'm start. Okay, okay. But uh, okay. So, what else did you like about uh, Air? No, I like I said, I enjoyed it. It's like a solid. It was a solid, entertaining movie. Like I said, Viola Davis steals the show as usual. I just thought it was like, like I said, I like Ben Affleck as a director because he, like, I know if I go see a Ben Affleck movie, I'm going to be entertained and it's going to be a well done movie. It's not going to, like you said, it's not going to revolutionize cinema. But with him, at least I know that the movie's going to be well made with good to great performances and it's not gonna waste my time and that's like the that's the best compliment i can give to him and i and i also say the reason why movies like this aren't being made anymore is because there were so many of them they stopped being special really no i'm talking about like movies like this like like the pelican brief oh okay you know what i'm saying like 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 that mid-tier hollywood movie where it's like you had like a julia roberts we had a meg ryan or you had this and that it's not that they're not good movies is that they were the norm. So when they were the norm, they stopped being special, but they're becoming special again because they're not the norm anymore. If you get what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Like we were, we were so we were so accustomed to them back in the day that now we're looking back, we're seeing certain trends that are going on right now. Like people constantly trying to copy certain things that you look back on those movies and go, wow, at least those movies were, were well-made with good actors. Now we got movies that are like just cynically being made to copy a trend. And then the movie that are really interesting are like now, like, like our house or on TV now. So when you see one of these once in a while, it's like, damn, they used to make movies like this. And now, and they're, and they're considered special now because they're not the norm now as they were back then. Hmm. Yeah, I guess so. But I mean, in terms of, we're just going to keep a short one on this, but was there anything else you want to talk about in this film? Not really. That's what I recommend to people if they haven't seen it yet. It's doing well. Under the circumstance, just because Mario's like almost made like $500 million over the weekend. Oh my God. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, it's going Seriously? to make a billion. Yes, it's going to make a billion. It's going to make a billion. Yes. So, so wow. it, it's on its way. I mean, this one, in fairness, is an Amazon Studios production as well. Yeah. This will make it onto Prime like relatively soon. And I think yeah. on Prime, it's going to be huge. Like, oh, it'll... yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. 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 Yeah. Yes. But I was surprised. Like, there were a lot of people in the cinema and it had already been out a week. So I was kind of like, this is quite good. You know, like, it, there were a lot of people on dates as well, which I was quite surprised. And, like, sorry, my last point is that everyone in the whole cinema was wearing Nike, except me. <laughs> <laughs> I was the rebel in Adidas. And oh, I was you like, were, you were in my Adidas. But, but it wasn't like a conscious Adidas. choice. I just. Happened to only pretty much own Adidas shoes. So I was like, okay, fine, fair enough. My bad. But yeah, sorry, you were going to say. They got me with Bo Jackson. That's where I wear Nike. They got me with Bo Jackson. <laughs> but nah, but like they said that, that this is going to be one of them things where people are actually coming back to it because they said that the, the business in relative to what the type of movie it is, is doing really well. It's doing extremely well for what the movie it is. And they said that, especially in America, like we have people on spring break and stuff like that. So I think a lot more people will see it. And I think the word of mouth on this one, it's going to be one of them word of mouth movies for adults. Like 
okay, the movie was good. It was entertaining. And adults are going to tell other adults they're going to go see it. And for planes, I'm telling you, people watching this on planes in a few months, you're going to love this film. Oh, my God. This is the perfect plane film, like 100%. It's like it's like a money ball for a oh, shoe, yeah, a shoe yeah, deal. Yeah, kind yeah, of. yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Okay, well, we're going to leave it there. And we will see you next time. Peace. <laughs>